And welcome everybody to the rock, paper, scissors tutorial in, drum roll please, da 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 da, Java. I know I usually do Python, but today I'm going to be doing a little bit of Java for you. So before I get started, quick shout out to my members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to become a member, click join down below, click subscribe, click the bell, comment, upvote, very much appreciated. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to be working on rock, paper, scissors. And so the topics we'll be covering uh, basically are the scanner class, um, strings, uh, we're going to be using some random numbers later, you'll see, and also there'll be conditionals, I guess you'd say, in this. So let's get started. Now, notice I've already saved this file. I've called it rockpaperscissors.java, and those, notice the capitalization. So I'm assuming that you know some Java already, so this should not be your first Java experience. I have other tutorials that will walk you through some of these things. So in Java, everything is a class, and I'm going to call this rock, paper, scissors. Notice rock, paper, scissors dot Java, rock, paper, scissors. These must match, otherwise it is not going to work correctly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create my uh, main method. So I'm going to say public, public, static, void, main, string, bracket. So it's an array and args. Again, I'm assuming you either know what these things are, or I can just tell you, you don't need to know them right now. So I'm going to go ahead and type system.out.println and say, you know, welcome to rock, oops, rock, paper, and scissors. Don't forget the semicolon. Um, I teach a lot of, I mostly teach Python, and most of the people on my channel are Python people, and most of the people I teach in real life are Python people. So I'll be probably referring a lot to Python during this, and if I do, it's just to help those people. So you can see this is a very minimal Java program. Okay, now note, I've got some comments here with the double slash, I've got my class, I've got my main method, and I've got at least one line of code here. Now Java, I'm going to need to compile. And I'm using something called Genie here. And if you're using something else, that's fine. It shouldn't matter what you're using. But I like Genie. And it's free and open source, so check it out. And then I've compiled it. And now I'm going to run it. And you'll see down here, welcome to rock, paper, and scissors. Now, if your program is not working at this point, don't continue with the tutorial. you got to get this part working. Otherwise, the rest of it's just a waste of your time. Okay, so fortunately, I've got it working. I've got everything balanced. I've got you know, opening and closing braces here, opening and closing braces here. So thinking about rock, paper, scissors. In this game, the player uh, has to enter you know, RPRS or something like that, and then plays against the computer player. So let's go ahead and get that part started. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this because I'm gonna be doing quite a lot of printing. And so what I usually do is I just kind of copy that and so I can just keep pasting it. Now I know some editors you can just type SOPL, which you know will automatically expand. Um, I don't know if Genie does that. Uh, just by the, you know, just if you're curious how to spell Genie, it's right there. And if you're curious, I'm also using something called Ubuntu Linux, although this will work on Mac and Windows, as far as I know. So uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and see about getting some input from the user. So I'm going to say, please choose R, rock, P for paper, or S for scissors. Note the way I've written this, and when I do it like this, it's kind of an old school thing. So the capital R with the, you know, the right parenthesis means I expect the user to type R capital R, not the whole word rock. Uh, in this case, not lowercase r. We're not going to deal with that for this tutorial. So what I need to do here is I need to get input from the user. And Java being Java, this is a bit more complicated than it is in something, say, like Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called the scanner class. So I'm going to go ahead and type import java.util.scanner. Notice the capitalization. Um, scanner is a class, so it's capitalized. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a scanner object, which is going to look like this. Uh, let's see if so I can scroll that up a little bit. So scanner, again, capital. I'm going to give my scanner a name. Uh, I'm using SC just because that's 
what I use, and I probably got it from tutorials somewhere. And I think it seems to be a common Java type thing, so I'm gonna use that. Type new scanner. And here's a weird one. We have to tell the computer where the input's coming from. So I'm gonna type system.in. So I assume that is the system standard input. I've created the object. Now I actually have to ask the user to use it. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this up here for a second because that'll it'll save us some trouble later. And now I have to copy that again. Oops, copy that whole thing again. And do the paste thing. So you don't need that line. I'm just doing this for my own use. So I've got the scanner. Now I'm going to be asking the user for RP or S. So I'm going to need a couple variables to hold this information. So I'm going to say string user choice. And I'm just going to put it as an empty string. And then I need another string for the computer choice. Like that. Okay. So to get the user choice, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say user choice equals sc.nextline. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm asking the user for a string. I'm going to input a line. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I've saved the file. I'm going to compile it. And I'm going to run it. So it says, please choose rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to type R. Seems like it's working. The only thing is I didn't like how you know, the R is on the next line. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to print. I'm going to save it, compile it, and test it. I cannot emphasize this enough for beginners to save, compile, test, save, compile, test. Because what happens is, and I'll invariably get questions later, you know, I got to line 47 and there's a problem in line 12 because I didn't check my code, okay? Uh, it's a lot easier to fix an error at the beginning. You can probably tell this is a pet peeve of mine, <laughs> okay? So we've got a user choice. So what I want to do next is I want to do the computer choice. I'm going to say computer choice. Now right now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hard code it because that, that part comes in later. So I'm going to say computer choice equals S, which of course means scissors. So what I have to do is print the computer choice. So watch what I do here. So if computer choice dot equals, this is how you compare strings in Java. Okay, and I got that. The computer chose scissors. Of course, I know it's hard coded. We'll fix that in a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to compile it. Okay, I think my computer locked up. It'll unlock in a second. It does this every once in a while. I don't know why. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the code because testing is very, very important. So there we go. So the compilation failed and because I forgot in a parenthesis. It's very, very common. This parenthesis has to match this one because this one matches that one. Let's go ahead and compile again and run it. And it doesn't really matter what I choose at this point. But you can see how it says the computer chose scissors. I chose rock, the computer chose scissors. Now at this point, what I'd probably do is I'd go ahead and just do the other two choices real quick. So, and paste that in there. I, I could have done duplicate, I believe, as well, which is probably what I should have done. So we got scissors, uh, rock, and paper. So here I'm going to put rock, and here I'm going to put paper. And again, at this point, I would probably test it. So let's do scissors. Let's try rock. Compile, okay, rock, and the computer chose rock. And we did scissors, so let's go ahead and test paper. Notice it's a capital P, not a small P. Go ahead and run it, and I can put W, it doesn't really matter. The computer chose paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to scissors. It doesn't really matter, but you can do what you want. So no matter what the computer choice is, now it's gonna print that out, okay? And again, I know we would normally not use three if statements, We'll come back to that possibly later if we have time. Okay. Now we have to determine a winner. Okay. So th 
this should be probably familiar to everyone, but let's go ahead and take a look at the possible outcomes of Junkin. Or, sorry, Junkin is what we call it in Japan. So you can see that the player has three possibilities, rock, paper, scissors. The computer has three possibilities, rock, paper, scissors. So obviously rock and rock is a tie, paper and paper is a tie, scissors and scissors is a tie. If the player chooses rock and the computer chooses scissors, the player wins. If the player chooses rock and the computer chooses paper, the computer wins. And so on and so forth for all nine possibilities. So there's nine potential combinations or outcomes of this game. There's three outcomes, win, lose, or tie, but there's nine potential combinations that lead to those outcomes. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our code. And what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and code one possible outcome. Okay, so I've already said that the computer choice is S. Okay? So I'm just going to code S. So I'm going to say if, say, user choice dot equals rock and it's two ampersands, computer choice um, dot equals uh, scissors, because that's what we've coded. I'm going to put an extra parenthesis to make sure this one matches that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I don't want to type that whole thing in again. And close it off. And I'm going to say who won here. So in this case, user has rock, computer has scissors. We'll say the user won. Or you could say something like you won since you are the user, but we can say the user won. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and test it. Because if this doesn't work, and there's no point in moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. It says, please choose rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to type R. And you see the computer chose scissors, the user won. So, so far, I have exactly what I, what, I, what I think I need to happen. Okay, so rock beat scissors. Okay, so what I could do here at this point, oops, is go ahead and just kind of copy this. I'm going to try and command D, which is duplicate. Okay. Now, here's what you need to think about. If I'm going to go back to this matrix real quick. Okay, so there are one, two, three situations where the player wins. So player chooses paper and computer chooses, uh, sorry, player chooses scissors, computer chooses paper, um, player chooses paper, computer chooses rock, and player chooses rock, computer chooses scissors. Now we've already done that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and code all of those possibilities. So rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. Okay. So you can see here I've coded all three possible wins for the user. Now what I could do at this point I've already tested scissors. I can go ahead and do paper. Okay, so scissors beats paper. So the computer chose paper, the user won. And then I could do rock. Okay, and then I, as the user, will choose paper. Okay, so clearly it's working exactly as I expected. And I forgot to switch back, I know. Um, I did that. I did that in the last time. I had to stop the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I got really annoyed. So all I did was I tested, you know, I did R, I tested it, I did paper, I tested it, I did scissors, I tested it. I'm not redoing the video. Um, I, can, I only have the, the uh, patience to do it uh, twice in, in one night. So what I've got working here is I've got all three where the user wins. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and hit command control D. Uh, which it basically duplicates it. Put a little space here. So I'm going to change this to the computer one. So again, I have to think about this. So let's do computer chose rock. That means the user chose scissors. The computer chose paper. So the user chose rock and the computer chose scissors, so the user chose paper. So those are the three ways 
that the computer can win. So rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, scissors beats paper. Now again, I should test this. Well, I'll test one code, but you should you should test them all. So the computer is going to choose rock. So rock beats scissors, and you'll see the computer won. Okay. So trust me when I say that all of these are going to work. <laughs> At least I think they will, unless I made a mistake somewhere. And then we have one more case, which is a tie. And so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So Control D on my computer. Might be Command D if you're using the Mac. So if the user choice equals S and the computer choice is S, say tie. And so S S and rock rock. And I'm going to copy that. I definitely recommend lots of copy and pasting to make your life easier. Rock rock paper and paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. Okay, it's compiling, that's a good sign. And I think it was scissors, right? Oh, computer chose rock. Let's try it again. Rock. And you can see how I chose a rock and the computer chose rock, so we have a tie game. So I'm pretty confident that this is all the code that we need for this game to work. Okay. Now, of course, the astute amongst you will be like, well, I don't want to have to hard code this because every single time now it's just going to be rock. So what we need to do is we need to ask the computer to choose randomly. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use something called the random class. So I'm going to say import java.util.random. And I know there are other ways to do this, so don't flood my inbox or the comments, yes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new random object. So just like I did with scanner, so I'll put it here to make it because it looks similar. Say so random, call it rand, equals new random parentheses. Now I don't need system in for this one. I'm just going to put parentheses. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'll put a little comment here. I'll say computer choice. Uh, yeah, what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and do make a new int. I'm going to call it num. And what I'll do here is I'm going to say num equals rand.nextInt parentheses 3. Okay. And what this does is this gives me an integer from 0 to 3, but doesn't include 3. So like 0, 1, or 2. Okay. Now if this was a 4, it would give me a random number, either 0, 1, 2, or 3. But because I only have rock, paper, and scissors, I'm just going to put a 3 there. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to say if num equals 0. I'll put parentheses or braces there computer choice equals R. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Command D or Control D. Say 1 is going to be paper and 2 is going to be scissors. Okay. Now notice because this is an integer, we defined it as an integer up here, um, I'm going to use equal, double equal signs here. Okay. Now for strings I have to use the dot equals method. So if you're not familiar with that, there you go. So what now will happen is the program will come down, we'll get a random number, 0, 1, or 2. If it's 0, it's an R. If it's a 1, it's a P. If it's a 2, computer choice is S. And the rest of the program will function exactly as it did before. So let's go ahead and compile it. Yosh. And run it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose rock. And it says, the computer chose paper, the computer won. So I'm going to run it again. I'll go ahead and hit rock. The computer choose, chose scissors, the user won. And again, I would keep testing it just to make sure everything works, but you know, I think we tested it enough earlier, so I think we should be okay with that. And there is our simple rock, paper, scissors program. Okay. At this point, everything is working. 
I'm a happy person. Um, life is good. <laughs> okay. Now, those of you who've done some coding before probably realize, okay, well, this isn't particularly efficient code. You know, it's not good to go if, 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 um, because num can't be zero and it can't be one at the same time. So I would just go ahead and probably do so, something like else if and else if. And I could put an else if I was worried that the random number was going to be a different number, but we'll just skip that part for now. Um, same thing here. Um, the computer choice has to be S, R, or P. So I'm going to go ahead and put else here, um, else if there, and the same thing here. Because uh, we can all, all of these options are what we'd say mutually exclusive. So we can go ahead and do that. Else if, else if, else if, and else if, else if, and else if. And again, I probably could have done that from the beginning. See, I misspelled else. So at this point, you know, again, I'm going to compile it, see if I made any mistakes. Fantastic. I'm going to run it and just kind of test it a couple times. I'll do R. Okay, so I chose rock, computer chose scissors, user one. Let's go ahead and I'll do paper this time. Oops, typed in the wrong spot. Okay, so I chose paper, computer chose scissors, computer one. And I'll go ahead and do scissors this time, see what happens. So we got scissors and scissors is a tie. Okay, and there's one more like optimization I could do here. There's actually a couple more, but I'll, I think I'll leave it fairly simple. Um, let me go ahead and put some space there. like. Make it look a little bit nicer. Um, now you might prefer to have it squished together. I like having a little bit of space. Uh, it's better for my eyes, I think. And so some of you have probably realized, especially those of you who have a little bit of a programming background, it's kind of inefficient to say this equals S and this equals S. This equals R and this equals R. This equals P and this equals P. So what I can do is I can take all three of those statements and I can condense them down to one. So I'm going to delete the last two. And what I'm going to say is if the user choice equals the computer choice. That's it. So if the user choice is S and the computer choice is S, we've got a tie. If it's R and R, we've got a tie. And if it's P and P, we have a tie as well. So I'm going to go ahead and test it just to make sure it compiles, make sure it runs. Let's say rock. Okay, so we got paper. So let's see if we can get a tie here. Just test one of them. Okay, there we go. So we got paper and paper. It is a tie. So that is our simple rock, paper, scissors game um, using some basic Java stuff and maybe some stuff you haven't seen before, like random. Again, there's another way to do this. But I think this way is a lot simpler for beginners. So let me just review the code real quick. So we've imported the scanner class, so we can do keyboard input. We've imported the random class so that we can do a random number. And we've got our standard you know, Java class structure here. We've created a new scanner object called SC. We've created a random object called RAND. We've created an integer called num. Didn't have to be num, I just called it that. And we've got two strings, user choice and computer choice, to store the information for those, yeah, the user and the computer, respectively. Print out the information. Then we use the next line method of the scanner object or scanner class to assign that value to user choice. Then we use the next int method of the random class to assign a value to num, either 0, 1, or 2. If the value is 0, we set computer choice to R. If it's 1, we set the computer choice to P. And if it's 2, we set it to S. Then we print the computer's choice. So if the computer chose S, scissors. Computer chose R, rock. Computer chose P, it's paper. And then down here we had our statements, basically determining who the winner is. So rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper and then the opposite for the uh, computer winning. And then also then down here with the tie, we did a little bit of, you know, kind of, you know, 
you know, making our code a little bit more efficient. We said if the user choice equals the computer choice, there's a tie. Now just, you know, look what happens if, if I enter like, you know, Q, um, basically we get the computer choice, but there, nothing happens. So this is something that we could deal with, but I think for beginners, this is pretty good. And just on a side note, um, I didn't have to do this part here. I could have done, I could have done down here, uh, I could have done something like num, you know, equals, you know, zero, instead of like, you know, the computer choice equals R or P or whatever like that. I could have just kept it the zero. However, it just makes the code a lot harder to read, a lot harder to understand, because then you have to think in your head, okay, what's a zero, what's a one, you know, what does a two represent? So I think I found it, I find it easier if, you know, we're comparing similar uh, values. And these values I chose because R stands for rock, S stands for scissors, and P stands for paper. So those are some of the kind of choices you want to make as a programmer to choose good values that make sense, to choose good uh, variable names that make sense. Because you want to be able to, you know, remember what you did when you come back to it, and you want other people to understand what you did as well. So anyway, that is it. That is rock, paper, scissors. I'll put a link down below to this code on my GitHub. I'll put a link down below to my other Java tutorials in case you haven't done a lot of Java, and it'll show you most of these things. The only thing you might not see in the tutorials is random, because that's something new that I'm, I'm using now, and uh, I just learned about it a couple days ago myself. So yeah, hope you liked it. So thanks for checking it out. Again, if you can, join as a member. You can subscribe as a... What? as a subscriber <laughs> and uh, definitely click like and you know any questions in the comments below. Thanks again and uh, as I like to say keep on coding. Take care.